Aloha and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today has no limitations when breaking new ground. He is known internationally as an elite jazz, R&B, pop saxophonist, songwriter, producer, and performer. His latest album, Breaking Through, has been widely played on contemporary jazz radio, reaching number one on the Billboard charts, as well as his second single, Dare to Dream, which has reached the top five on the Billboard charts. He will be here in Hawaii at Blue Note Hawaii, June 14th and 15th. Let's welcome Mr. Eric Darius to the show. Aloha, Eric, how are you? Aloha, I'm good, how are you? <laughs> You're learning it already, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. The first time I met you was in 2014 when Mr. Michael Paolo, who's a friend of mine, brought you over for a concert, and I think you were in concert with Steve Oliver. So that was the first time I had heard of you, and oh my gosh, you just put on such a high energy show. I know one of my, my friends uh, that was in the audience, you just made her day when you climbed through, walked around and climbed through the, <laughs> through the rest of the guests and sat on her lap and started playing. So here, there was the picture right there. You just made her day. I was like, wow, you know, how did he do that? <laughs> You're just, That's you're just awesome. amazing. You're just amazing. Um, now, you grew up in a musical family. Your, your father was a bass player. Mom played piano and a singer. Brother is a drummer and trumpet, trumpet player. Your sister also uh -huh. sings and plays clarinet. And then you play the saxophone. So you guys have your own mini band <laughs> right there. What was that like yeah. growing up in that household? It was amazing. You know, I, everybody in my family loves music and everybody's musically talented. So it was so much fun just bonding through music. We actually did have our own family band. It was called D's Express and we mostly play Caribbean Calypso music. My dad's from Haiti. My mom is from Jamaica. Oh, wow. And uh, it was an amazing time of just sharing music together as a family and probably some of the most uh, exciting times for me musically, just being able to share that experience with my family. So at a young age too, you were, you started playing music very young and you were in the America's Youngest Jazz Band. How was that? Tell us about that. It was an incredible experience. I was uh, 11 years old when I joined the band. The band is from ages five through 12. Mm -hmm. And basically it's an old school big band. So there's about 35 kids in the band. And Sonny uh, puts this band together of all these kids from all over you know, Florida. And basically, we're playing the music of Duke Ellington, Count Basie, Glenn Miller, um, real old school Dixieland jazz. And we were traveling all around the country, even performed at the Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland. So we're wow. traveling the world. It was such an amazing experience. Probably the best experience I could possibly have as an 11-year-old kid. Well, look at how you got your start and look at where you are now. So it, it, that, that's amazing. Now, there are, there are a lot of or I should say there are many amazing saxophone players, but what makes your sound different from any other sax player? Um, you know, my sound is a combination of all the artists that I grew up listening to and admiring from David Sanborn, Grover Washington Jr., Kirk Whalum, uh, a little bit of Cannibal Adderley, a little bit of Charlie Parker. Um, you know, my sound is very soulful, but it mm -hmm. also has that energy. You know, when you hear yes. me play, you can feel the excitement and energy coming through my instrument. And, you know, I try to sing through my instrument as well. So I play very melodical and lyrical, uh, just like a vocalist would through their instrument. So I think my sound is, you know, really a, a culmination of all the artists that inspired me growing up, but it has its own twist, which is what my sound is all about. And, and it does, it, it, <laughs> what you say is true. And for those of you, um, like I said, Eric will be here in Hawaii on June 14th and 15th. You need to get your tickets and see him because he puts on an electrifying show. You will not be disappointed. I can, I can definitely tell you that. You recently, and I always say this, and people laugh at me, even on my radio show, I say this. You recently <laughs> <laughs> worked with my man, <laughs> Mr. Brian Culberson. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, he's, he's, He's electrifying too. So the two of you together, and I've seen you two both play, 
at um, the Napa Jazz Festival, but you recently right. dropped L-O-V-E uh -huh. featuring him, and this is your third single from your seventh album, Breaking Through. How was it working right. with Mr. Brian Culberson? What, from, a, you know, from every, your standpoint, how is it working with him? You know, every time working with him is always a great experience. You know, Brian was actually one of those artists that kind of took me under his wing. You know, I was 19 years old when I actually joined his band. And uh, I was on the road with him for about a year. And I just learned so much being around him, touring and traveling with him and being in the studio with him. Uh, he's just such an amazing musician, person, um, great producer. So every time we have the opportunity to share the stage together, it's just pure electric. You know, I'm high energy, he's high energy. So when we get together, um, it's just something amazing that always happens when we perform together. But this is actually the first time uh, that Brian actually joined me on my project as a featured guest. And wow. you know, when I wrote, I wrote L-O-V-E, which stands for living our vows every day. I wrote it for my wife for our first dance. We got married about a year and a half ago. And um, you know, when I was writing that song, I was hearing Brian's piano behind it the whole time. Uh, so I reached out to him and he was uh, gracious to, uh, to play and record on that track. And it's just magic. We have a, this natural chemistry every time we, we play music together. So it's, it's really something special. Yes, you do. Now, are you going to be at the at his jazz festival this year? Are you going to be at the Napa Festival? I will. Fest? Are you? Gosh, I wish I, I wish I, I wish I could be there for that one, but I can't. Cause that, that's going to be high energy. I know. The artist that's actually been at his festival every single year since he started it eight years ago. Wow. And you just you're just going to keep it going. And then I think I'm, I'm I'm veering off track a little bit um, because as as we're talking, I know you're also doing the San Diego Jazz Festival, right? Are you hosting that yeah. one? They just started this new festival in beautiful Embarcadero Park in San Diego uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to be hosting it all mm -hmm. three days and headlining the festival as well. So I'm really excited about that. I'm, I'm going to try and make that. I'll, I'll try and make that one because it's not far from, from Hawaii to there. <laughs> We'd love to have you there. <laughs> now, you do something which I am really a fan of. And you know, they're taking the music out of the schools now, right. but you do something in which you're giving back to the unit, giving back to the youth, giving back to the community in the form of education. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your, your mission and it's called on a mission in the schools. Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. I started on a mission, the schools, um, about eight, nine years ago, actually. You know, just reflecting on my journey and how blessed I've been, you know, had it not been for the experiences I had in school, I wouldn't be the musician I am. and I wouldn't be where I am today. And so, you know, I noticed that nowadays all these kids don't have music programs in their schools. They're mm -hmm. taking all of the arts out of the schools. And that's heartbreaking to me because what's going to happen to the future of music if these kids aren't getting that creative outlet, being able to express themselves through the arts. Right. So I kind of took it upon myself just to kind of make a difference, to see whatever I can do to help, to try to keep music alive in the schools, expose kids to jazz, encourage them to play an instrument. So I go to different elementary, middle, high schools, even colleges all around the country, um, just doing workshops with students and just trying to keep music alive because I think it's important. It's something that I think every single child needs. Uh, I think the arts and music is a vital part of every child's education. So. Um, yes. Hopefully, you know, in years to come, they'll start try, uh, investing more into the arts in the schools. Yes, and, and I'm just, I'm going to keep a watch on that because I, I'm just so interested in, in that because I grew up playing music in the schools. I was in marching band in college and all that, and I just love uh -huh. music. I love it, especially smooth jazz. But, <laughs> you know, so I'm really going to keep an, keep an eye on that. Is there a website or anything that people can go to, to tune in, you know, to, to watch that or donate funds or anything to that? Well, right now you can just go to my website, ericdarius.com. It's www.ericdarius, E-R-I-C-D-A-R-I-U-S.com. And you can click on the On a Mission, the Schools link. There's some information there. And uh, upcoming in the next few months, we're going to have um, some ways that you can get involved, donate. And also we plan on um, contributing to the schools as well and trying to raise funds for providing instruments uh, for these underprivileged schools as well. So stay nice. tuned because that's 
Oh, I will definitely be watching for that. You have collaborated and worked with so many artists, and I'm just going to name a few here. Of course, my man, Brian Culberson, Prince, Christ. Carlos Santana, Babyface, Wynton Marcellus, and that's just to name a few. Who would you like to collaborate with next? Ah, uh, I mean, there's so many, but if I were to give you maybe my top three, I would definitely say Stevie Wonder. Uh -huh. um, he's one of the people that's influenced me, influenced me the most as a musician, as a songwriter. Um, I love to have an opportunity to work with him. And Alicia Keys is at the very top of my list as well. I, re I recorded a song of hers, If I Ain't Got You, on my Just Getting Started album. Uh, just being a fan of what she stands for, the incredible music that she makes, music with substance, and uh, her music is a breath of fresh air, you know, out there that always has a positive message. And then another one I have to throw on top of the list is Bruno Mars. Those would be my top three right now. Nice. Nice. That should be, I, I'm going to be looking out for that for sure. Come, for sure. Come <laughs> <laughs> now you've done many songs, your albums, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to say these. Okay. So your first album was Cruising, and you did that one in high school. You were still in high school. That was in 2000 when that came out, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> <laughs> then in 2004, you came out with Night on the Town. 2006, Just Getting Started. 2008, Going All Out. 2010, On a Mission. 2014, uh -huh. Retro Forward. And then your current one, breaking through. Now, how did you come up with that title for breaking through? Um, you know, breaking through kind of represents a lot of things for me. You know, for me, this is actually the first album I've released independently on my own record label. I started my own record label about a year and a half ago. It's called Sagittarius Music. I'm a Sagittarius. I was born in December. So mm -hmm. I decided to call my label Sagittarius Music because uh, for me, it was taking a leap of faith, just believing in the gift that I've been blessed with and just having an opportunity to share music with fans directly. You know, the music business has changed so much. And I think now is, is the best time to be a, a recording artist because there's so many new, you know, innovative ways to be able to reach the fan, the fans with social media, YouTube, all these other amazing outlets. Mm -hmm. So for me, breaking through was kind of that revelation that, you know what, I'm finally taking that leap of faith. I'm releasing music on my own, having that creative um, control just to make music the way I really want to make it without ha having any restrictions, no limitations. Um, it was probably the most freeing experience I've ever had as a recording artist. And so I just wanted to break down all the walls, all the barriers. This music isn't about genres, it's about music. Mm -hmm. It's jazz, it's hip hop, it's R&B, it's pop, it's rock, it's gospel, it's funk. It's all these elements fused together. Um, so breaking down all those barriers and the stereotypes of what people think jazz is. You know, when a lot of people hear the word jazz, they think one thing, but my music is so many different um, styles and sounds fused together. And also, personally, I was going through some, some trials and tribulations and just trying to figure out, you know, the right decisions to make as far as my career and my personal life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like I finally had that epiphany um, where I knew that this was the time to kind of start making decisions for myself. And uh, breaking through just represents, you know, just this freeing experience as a, as a man, as a person, as a recording artist, as a songwriter. And uh, it's the most exciting time in my life. Wow, that's a, that's a great that's a great title. We have to go on a quick break, but I promise you, we will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hey, Aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. 
I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am here with Mr. Eric Darius via, <laughs> via Skype. Eric? Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> welcome back again. Thank you so much for being here. Now to the viewers, we were just talking um, about Eric's newest album, Breaking Through, and he was talking about how he came up with the title. One thing I do want to ask you is, what do you feel is the best song you have ever released and why? Whew. Wow. <laughs> That's gotcha. a tough one. You know, trying to choose my favorite song is almost like asking somebody to choose their favorite child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All special to me in different ways. Every song has a different meaning. Um, and, you know, every song that I write is really about my life. It's personal experiences poured into to music. Um, so, and every song is at a different stage and point in my life as well. So it, it's hard to say, um, since you're asking me and I have to come up with an answer, I would say right now, uh, probably L O V E, you know, that, that song means so much to me. You know, when you listen to the song, it's, it's emotional. There's so much, uh, feeling and, um, it was something special, you know, when I started writing that song, just reflecting on my journey and, you know, my wife and thinking about that big day um, mm -hmm. was probably the most surreal experience. So L-O-V-E, which stands for Living Our Vows Every Day, is probably one of the my favorite songs I've written so far. Well, I did. I listened to it and it is a beautiful song. But I love all of Thank your music. You. I love all of your music. I think my favorite song that I will tell you that I that I like off of the album, it's it's uh -huh. sort of like a Latin jazz. Is it Siempre? Siempre? Yeah, Siempre. I I I love that song. I love that. That's what I'm too. It really is. And you know, with every album, if you notice, I always incorporate some Caribbean or Latin flavors. Yes. Because yes. I'm Caribbean, I'm Caribbean That's boy. Your my mom is Jamaican. So I never forget my roots or where I came from, and I always try to incorporate some of that Caribbean flavor because you never really hear that much in in smooth jazz. Right. So right. Uh, Siempre is about. It's always always remembering. Um, who I am, where I came from, and I always like to incorporate that. Well, speaking of that, can you play us just a little bit of something just for our viewers and our listeners that were that are going to go to the show at Blue Note Hawaii <laughs> when Absolutely. you are here in I'll Hawaii? Do... <laughs> <laughs> just play us just a little bit of something. A little something. All right. Now just imagine that uh, I'm on stage, the lights are shining, I'm uh -huh. there with my band, the energy is off the charts, and then I'm running around on stage. Yeah, like so you do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, Fired Up on the Breaking Through album. Okay. <laughs> Because I know you're going to do it up at Blue Note Hawaii. No. I know you. 
That was just a sneak peek. And that was an awesome yeah. sneak peek. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, are you working on any new projects right now? Um, I actually started writing new music for the next project, and um, it looks like I'll probably be releasing a single next year, early spring, and hopefully I'll be releasing a new album fall of, two, of 2020. So that's in the works. Nice, nice. Now, I talked with you earlier, and you uh -huh. just returned from Mallorca, Spain, from that huge festival in yeah. Mallorca, Spain, that I was not there. <laughs> But where to next? Where to next? What is your what you what do you have coming up next? What things you have coming up? You know, you got Blue Note. There's a lot coming up. Well, definitely the Blue Note Jazz Festival, uh, Blue Note um, in, in Hawaii mm -hmm. on June 14. I'm going to be hosting and headlining the San Diego Smooth Jazz Festival, um, which I'm really excited about. That's at the end of June. Um, we're in Philadelphia. I have shows in Italy coming up in August. Wow. Um, I mean, there's so much coming up. I, I, I can't even wrap my brain around it. Uh, but a lot of exciting things. So I'm looking forward to hitting the road and, and seeing everybody all over the world. If you could give with, with a lot of artists that are coming up today, some uh -huh. make it and some don't. What advice right. would you give an up and coming musician or what what advice would you give a, a person wanting to come into the music industry? Um, you know, I would tell anybody coming into the music industry, you know, being successful in this business is tough, um, but it's really about the four P's. And those were the four P's that I really lived by, um, which is practice, patience, perseverance and persistence. Those are the four keys uh, that it really takes to be successful in the music business is a lot of work. There's gonna be a lot of ups and downs. Um, it's about sacrifice. And if it's something that you truly believe in and you're passionate about it, go for it 110%. You know, everybody, you know, I know there's a lot of parents that don't think music is a real job or, you know, the chances of, you know, being successful in the music business is rare. Um, but if you believe in yourself and you put in the work, anything is possible, but you have to um, go 110%. You know, it's it's a lifelong commitment and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I, I encourage younger people to follow their dreams and never give up. There will be ups and downs. That's just part of life. And uh, that's very prevalent in the music business as well. Oh, that's that's awesome advice. That is great advice. For for those of you, again, Eric Darius will be here at Blue Note Hawaii, June fourteenth and the fifteenth. Two shows, right? Each day, six thirty yes. and nine o'clock p.m. If you have not got your tickets yet, I advise you to go to www.bluenotehawaii.com and get your tickets because this is a show that you do not want to miss. And I'll probably be at both shows. I'm gonna let you know that right now. But this is a show <laughs> that <laughs> you just don't want to miss him perform. High energy, awesome performance. And if you want to know more about Mr. Eric Darius, you can go to www.ericdarius.com, correct? That's it, absolutely. If you want to and know his schedule. Media. Instagram, Twitter under Eric Darius, and I love interacting with the fans. All of that. So, you know, go check him out. Go to his shows. I'm going to try and make it to San Diego because that, that's, that's time. Right. I got some time to try and make it to San Diego. Um, but awesome. again, I thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure. I met you once. I get to meet you again in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> it, was, it, it was a pleasure. To, to talk with you and thank you so much. My thank pleasure. You. Thank you for having me and I can't wait to see you in a few weeks. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you. This, this ends our time here on Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. Tune in next week when my host will be, my, my guest I should say, will be Mr. Paul Brown. Until then, aloha and God bless.